So kingdom one era. See this diagram above me? Okay. This is a diagram of a typical what? Bacteria. What are the characteristic features of this kingdom? It includes all the prokaryotes. That means I'm talking about the bacteria. They're unicellular. I just told you. They are microscopic and the size range is between 1 to 5 micrometer. Really, really small. How small? Do you want to see? How small? Let's see. See, I'm showing you a size comparison. What is this? This is the nucleus of the animal cell I'm talking about. Now, this is the animal cell. This is the bacterium. And see the size of a virus. Yes. Now, can you compare the, can you just imagine the size difference between all these structures? Well, yes, they are really, really small. But I told you that this size, it's a range, it's an average size range. They are smaller, they are bacteria. I'll talk about in this session, which is smaller than this. Let's see. Great. Now, let's see the several other characteristics. These are the organisms which are one of the most abundant microscopic organisms. Naked circular DNA. What do you mean by this? You know it. Naked circular DNA. That means this DNA, their genetic material is naked. It's lying free. It's not a membrane. It's not present within a membrane bound structure. So it's called naked. Do they have cellular organelles with a cell, uh, the membrane? Do they have it? No, they don't have. Fine. They have a very rigid cell wall which is composed of peptidoglycan. Yes, what? Peptidoglycan. They have a cell wall. Their ribosome type is 70S. So don't have to bother about what is this 70S. It's different in eukaryotes. We are going to study about these things in detail when we are dealing with the chapter cell. Fine. You know, they have pigments, chromatophores. They have pigments. We are going to talk about all these pigments. See, these pigments, how they provide color to these organisms. Fine. Do you uh, remember about the mode of nutrition? Let's see. They have one of the most wide varieties, diverse varieties of the mode of nutrition. If I talk about all the five kingdoms, yes, they can be autotrophic, they can be heterotrophic, in autotrophic, they can be photosynthetic, they can be chemosynthetic, in heterotrophic, they can be what? saprophytic, they can be symbiotic, they can be parasitic. Well, some of the bacteria, as you can see here, they have a structure. It's a whip-like structure. And this structure can move. This structure can move. And because of this, it helps in the movement of the cell, in the of the bacteria. Okay? So, those have the flagella, they are motile. And which don't have the flagella, they cannot move, they are non-motile. Great. I'll show you some other classification system, you are aware of this. Let's quickly revise them. See, based on shape, this kingdom, this bacteria can be divided into various forms. Coccus, it's spherical, round. Bacillus, it's like rod shaped. See about Vibrium, it's comma shaped. And Spirillum, it's spiral, coiled. There is another mode of classification based on cluster. See, they can remain as single cells. These single cells can cluster and form different shapes. Let's see. See, coccus, you have just seen it. Diplococci, that means two cocci when they stay in a cluster, when they remain close by. When this, this diplococcus is caps, has, it forms a capsule, this is known as what? Diplococci encapsulated, right? Formation of a capsule. It's a very protective covering around this structure. Well, I'll talk about cephalococci after this. Tetrad, very simple. It is four. Tetra means four. Sarsia. This forms a 3D structure. As you can see, see it properly. It's a 3D structure. Now, compare between the staphylococci and the streptococci. See the difference? It's streptococci. It's basically streptococci. It's basically chains. And staphylo means bunch. It forms like a, it, it, it forms a bunch, bunch of grapes. Yes, see the similarity. Okay, fine. Now let's move on to the rod-shaped bacteria. Coccobacillus, that means it has a structure near 
which is a combination of the coccus and the bacilli, bacillus, cocco bacillus. So it's a mostly oval shaped. Bacillus is rod shaped. When this are stacked, it's called palisade. Diplo, of course, you understand two when they cluster together and strepto here it was chains and here also see again chains so these this was a classification based on the clusters well let's move on a bit there are other forms of classification of this bacteria now based on flagellation flagella how many and where these flagella are present if flagella is not present at all it's called atricus atricus or atricus if there is one flagella, one flagellum, okay, one flagellum at one end, it is called monotricus. A tuft or a group of flagella on one end, at the one end of the cell, it's called lophotricus. Next is amphitricus. Amphitricus is basically one, uh, one flagellum on the either end, okay. See, both the ends, this end and this end, one on each. Next is Peritrachus, yes. So the flagella here in these type of cells, the flagella is distributed throughout over, or throughout the surface of the cells. That is called peritrachus. Next we have, see, amphilophotrichus. That means lophotrichus is a tuft or a group at one end. And amphi means one one on the both ends. That means it has group or tuft of flagella on both the ends. At times, you know, the, it is also known as cephalotrichus. Okay, so this was based on the flagellation. Fine. So, now let's classify bacteria, this kingdom, based on the mode of reproduction. Let's see. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Can you see this? Just see what, what's happening over here. Right? What, what do you think? What is happening? See it carefully. The cells... They are, see, pinching off. It is division. It is a form of asexual reproduction as mentioned over here. So what is happening? What do you think? This is a form of reproduction in which there is no gamete formation. Hence, it's asexual reproduction. Now, it's a very simple form of reproduction. And this here is known as binary fission. Here, what happens? Look at the diagram above me, okay? So here one cell, okay, it divides, it pinches off. The genetic material, as you can see inside, has duplicated, it replicates, and then it is distributed uniformly on the two daughter cells, two new daughter cells. See? And from between, it forms a it forms a structure. Okay, it starts starts pinching off, it starts dividing, and two independent daughter cells are formed. So this is known as binary fission. Well, this is one of the most common methods of the asexual reproduction by the kingdom Monera. Now, one cell divides into two. And you know, within 20 minutes, this daughter cell becomes ready to undergo this binary fission. Within 20 minutes. And now if I tell you, let's imagine there is one parent bacterium. If I ask you, within 24 hours, that is one day, okay, within 24 hours, one full day, how many cells will be formed? How many bacteria cells, how many bacterial cells will be formed? Think about it. It's one, is it thousand, is it ten thousand, it is within lakhs, ten lakhs, millions, billions, what? Well, let me tell you the, the number. The estimated number is about... 4.7 into 10 to the power. You know power, right? Yes. 10 to the power, what? It's, I'm sure you'll be amazed, 21. 10 to the power, 21. 4.7 into 10 to the power, 21 cells will be formed from one parent cell in 24 hours. Okay, that's great. There is one saying, you know, some people believe that these unicellular organisms, bacteria, they are at times referred to as immortal. Immortal means they don't die. Do you believe in this? What do you think? Think about it. Immortal. Well, the concept behind this is, see this cell. This was the parent cell. 
Now the contents of the cell divided and it was passed on to two new daughter cells. Fine, but this organism as it is, you can see it did not die. It just replicated, it just increased, increased its content and then passed the contents and divided equally into two daughter cells. Now there are two daughter cells. Basically I can say that the parent cell is now, everything of the parent cell is now divided into the daughter cells. So the parent cell did not die. So because of this concept, you know, these unicellular organisms are at times referred to as immortals. Well, that does not mean that bacterial cells do not die. They can die because of accumulation of accumulation of products, okay, accumulation of waste products because of some toxics, toxic agents in a particular medium that in which these bacteria are thriving. So based on that, based, because of aging, these cells can die. But at times, you understand, they can be referred to as immortals. Well, that's an interesting concept. There is another mode of asexual reproduction. Well, what is it called? Spore formation. Spore. Now, what are these spores? Spores are basically structures which are highly, highly resistant. The structure of the spores, they are highly resistant. They have very thick wall. Thick wall. And which helps in providing the resistance this property of resistance. Fine. So this is the cell as you can see. Endospores. The spores when they are produced and they remain inside the cells. These are called endospores. Fine. So this is present within the cell. It can also be exospores where the spores are released out of the cell as you can see. Okay. Endo which is present inside and exo when they are released out of the cells. Well, you know, about these spores, if I talk a bit more about these spores, these spores are so resistant structures, they can tolerate a temperature of plus minus 100 degrees Celsius. That means even if you're boiling water, if the spores are present, they won't die. And these spore producing bacteria, they are generally pathogenic. There's one fortunate thing that is, uh, that poses, that's that we found out that not many bacteria, not, not many bacterial species, they produce spores. So in that case, we are quite saved. But trust me, these two, three types of species which are there existing till now, we have found it out. Maybe there are more. But these species are enough to create a lot of mess in our life. So yes. So these spores are highly resistant structures, they can, they can tolerate high temperatures, variations in temperature, they are totally resistant to toxic chemicals. So you understand how, how resistant these structures are. Fine. Okay, great. We talked about asexual reproduction. You understood about it. Fine. Do bacteria, does bacteria produce sexually, reproduce sexually? What do you think? Sexual reproduction means formation of gametes. Well, yes, bacteria does reproduce sexually, but there's a slight difference. We actually cannot call it sexual reproduction, rather we would call it parasexual reproduction. You know why? Because as in general, we know sexual reproduction involves the formation of gametes, the process of meiosis that you're going to study in the cell division chapter. But these things does not happen here. But then there is something which happens that's basically the transfer or rather I can say the exchange of genes, okay? So gene recombination happens and hence it's called parasexuality. Well, let me show you something interesting. See this. See what's happening. What do you think? What, what is happening over here? See it, it like it's crawling like a snail or rather I think a, an earthworm or a, yes, a leech maybe, right? But there are nothing of the examples I told about, okay? The, what you know what is this what is this that you're looking at these are the genes yes these are the genes well this is a just an animation to show you and the genes they don't travel like this of course because you understand this is an animation so what happens is genes are exchanged I'll give you some more extra detail so that you are really you know something more about this this process is known as conjugation you know what happens here there are two types of cells. One is male, one is considered female. Okay, female. 
Now, how do you differentiate? Male are those cells which have got the fertility factor and they are known as F+. So, we'll study about plasmids, okay? They have the fertility factor and these factors code for specific genes, okay? And those cells which do not have the fertility factor, they are referred to as F-. So, males which are F+, they are the donors and females, they are the recipient. What happens? See here, as in the animation you can see, what happens, you know, the male, that is the donor, it replicates its, its genes and one of the copy of those genes are sent to the F minus. So what happens? There's a cha change in the sex of this. So the F minus transforms into F plus, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, there are much more intricacies into this process and it's really beautiful. When you study further advanced biology, when you're studying, you'll see how beautifully the bacteria controls all these processes. Well, fine.